Hello and welcome back to the Ray Tracer Challenge, uh, a YouTube series where I'm implementing a Ray Tracer in Rust, uh, a language I've not used before starting this series, so I'm learning Rust while going along with this Ray Tracer, um, based on the book The Ray Tracer Challenge by James Buck, which you can see here. And um, yeah, I, I'm doing this um, part by part, piece by piece, and learning the language and having some fun while implementing a ray tracer. Um, you can actually find all the resources um, about this and what we are going to do here in the description below. So there are links to the source code repository, to other resources, to the book, for example, and to all kinds of different um, relevant stuff there uh, linked in the description. Furthermore, you can uh, visit the raytracer.xyz website if you would like to play around with this thing yourself. This is actually exactly the ray tracer uh, we are writing here, which we are creating here during those sessions. Um, I've simply compiled it to WebAssembly and then wrote a small JavaScript shell around it uh, so that I I myself and every one of you can play around with this uh, and um, I'm keeping it up to date with what we are doing here so once the video is out um, the new features of the video are usually already um, are present in this thing here uh, already. So um, the last time we actually did some cleanup work and some, some uh, more uh, integrated some more tests and actually fixed the bug in, in one of our uh, comparison routines which we are using or were using for tests. And um, yeah, I've, I've created and wrote out a new default uh, definition here for this ray tracer site. So if you are opening it, it has now a pattern. And this is exactly where we want to uh, get, get in going there. Um, we implemented some time ago a pattern. Uh, let me see, pattern rust. So there should actually be somewhere here, should be our, there, so our striped pattern. So we implemented a pattern there um, called striped. And this pattern actually is what you can see here projected onto this sphere. It yeah makes makes a pattern structure uh, on this sphere. So um, what we wanted to do for some time now, but were interrupted by different other thing, things, as I've said, like for example the cleanup and stuff like that. Um, we wanted to implement further patterns. Uh, there, there could be different ones which we, which we want to, to implement first, but um, the, the next one that we want to actually do is, and I, I'm now thinking about re maybe refactoring this out in a different file. Okay, let's, let's keep it for here now and let's just add another pattern here. Would be a gradient pattern so that we can actually have some sort of gradient between multiple colors, I would say two for now, um, where we have this, this pattern there where we can use multiple colors for an object and the system will automatically create um, the gradient between, the, uh, between them. So um, let's see, um, I would say then that we need another another structure here. We have uh, our striped struct here, but we will need another one. So let's define our, yeah, I would say gradient struct there. And um, what does this struct actually need? Uh, I guess we will need a color, color A as well. So gradient A would be a color there and we want uh, and of course, I'm in the wrong wrong thinking of naming and naming scheme there again. Uh, color B. And what we need is, of course, a transform as with the, uh, with the uh, other patterns or with every pattern actually, we want to be able to somehow transform this, to, to be able to scale it, to rotate it, to, to move it, to do all kinds of different transformations to it. So this will be a matrix, no, not a five by five, but a 
four by four matrix. By the way, um, if you are asking why we are using four dimensional uh, tuples to store our points and vectors and why we are using four by four matrices in a three dimensional world instead of using um, three by three matrices and three by three tuples slash vectors, um, I've recently made a video about this where I'm trying to explain in a very simple manner why we are using 4x4 matrices and 4x4 um, tuples here and why this is done generally in, in 3D uh, rendering and data processing and um, why it's a good idea to do that actually. Um, so if you've not, not seen that already, uh, just check out my YouTube channel and the other videos on there. It's, I guess it's the um, two videos before this one <laughs> um, where you will find it. And um, yeah, um, so have a look there if you are interested in this. So, okay, now we have this transformation and of course all of those fields are never used. So the first thing I guess we need to do is um, implement uh, what what do we actually all need to implement we need to we need to implement fuzzy equality of course we need to implement the builder yeah I guess I guess we should implement the default first and then we will see so let's see implement default for great Come on, gradient. Sorry, sorry for for mistyping a little bit. I'm still a little bit handicapped here. Um, so we now have uh, no. We need to actually implement this. Um, there it is. So we are actually creating. It would actually be nice if we would have a. Hmm, yeah. A, a color d default thingy here but for now let's um, I would say create a new color here and and maybe let's go into the color here and don't we have a color RS where are the colors actually implemented are they actually part of the canvas I'm not there we are so uh, we actually have those shortcut functions here to create specific colors and I would like to add some basic colors there so let's add a uh, red there which will return a self i would like to have a uh, uh, green there as well uh, and i would like to have let's scroll up a little bit here um, i would like to have a blue there as well so that we can at least create the base colors easily and um, yeah we, we simply return a new color here which is then 0 0.00.0 1.0 and th that did not work as i would have liked it to this one will actually then be uh, uh, yeah, this and this would be uh, then a one for this component and a zero component there. And now let's and we all need to remove the semicolon at all of those lines. And then now, why is my formatting not working? Because I'm missing an FN there. And now, now it formats, nice. Okay, so now we've added those colors. Let me quickly, uh, quickly see and commit this. Canvas, canvas, not animator, canvas, not camera. What the heck? There we go. Yeah, we've added those colors and let's quickly commit this. Add. Um, ease of use color constructors for base colors red green and blue um, those 
construction functions will provide us with a sim simple way to create basic colors. More might follow in the future. Um, there we go. So now we have added those. Let's go back to our pattern and let's maybe create something between red by default and let's create color green maybe. And the transform of course will be uh, the transform should actually have a default, so we could uh, actually use the default there. Uh, I'm thinking about implementing default for a color, so maybe we should have a default color like white or something, but okay, not yet. So now we've implemented um, default, so now let's implement something more specific like our builder, builder pattern for the gradient, so we are implementing the gradient here. And we need our builder pattern. So what we want to do is we want to have a pubfn with colors. We it, it makes sense that we always need to specify both of them. So we are getting a color A and a color B b which is a color as well and we are returning self and of course we are getting a self in here and we are getting a mutable self and not a reference but the uh, the thing itself because what we are going to do now is we are setting color a to equal color a and self color what did I do there? How did I? Okay, color A equals color A and self color B equals color B and then we are returning self again. So expected a block. Oh, written too much of another language lately for the job. So there we are. And what we need of course as well is a function called uh, with transform and it gets a mutable self as well and it gets a transform which is a matrix four by four and it will return self and it simply sets the transform to transform and returns self. Um, by the way, if any one of you knows, knows a way to, to ease this kind of thing here, I would very much uh, like to hear about it. So um, I, I really much like this pattern um, to do things like that and uh, to have those default creation and then being able to um, to build up the new uh, object step by step and simply chain all those calls um, because it's always returning a new instance or a changed instance of itself. It's, it's kind of like a way of having uh, an immutable immutable data structure but without copying all the data into a new data structure all the time. So it, I really much like this, um, but I don't like the way to to always have to, to write those functions. I've, I've thought about creating a macro for this maybe, but I'm not sure if this makes things more readable. So if you know some something which might be out there, maybe there is a, a full-blown nice crate out there which does all this stuff for me automatically by providing a macro and I just need to more or less uh, need to, to put some information onto those things here, some annotation, and it will create all those stuff for me automatically. That would be nice. And I think there might be something out there, but I don't know it. So if you know it, please give me a hint about it. So now we will be able to create a gradient. Uh, do we have... Uh, 
some sort of test for that. No, we are simply using it. Okay, so I don't think we need a test for that. So what we want to do now is maybe implement quickly uh, fuzzy equality for our new pattern as well, which is exactly this one here. Um, even though, uh, no, there we want to put it. So we want to implement uh, fuzzy equality for the gradient. However, I'm just, so a gradient with a gradient. So um, this one will be a gradient as well. And we want to trade bound gradient clone is not satisfied. Yeah, of course it's not because we've not uh, specified it. So maybe we should we should simply get all those derived implementations, copy clone debug partial equality as well. So. But what I've just realized is that we are not fuzzy equality comparing the transform here as well, which we actually need to do. So we will do this one and we will fuzzy equality with uh, other dot transform. And let's remove those unnecessary parentheses which I got there. But we actually need to add those to this comparison as well. We, we complete, completely seem to have missed that before. So let's quickly fix this here and do a self transform fuzzy equality other transform. I guess we missed this one when we added the transformation here. So let's quickly uh, commit only this this thing here, which would be, yes, stripe, yes, this one, and then uh, let's commit this one, fix fu fuzzy EQ for striped pattern by incorporating uh, or by comparing transform as well. Um, the comparison of the defined matrix seems to have been forgotten once we implemented, mm. if I matrix seems to have been forgotten, once we implemented uh, the transform capabilities. This error is corrected by this patch and now delegates to the fuzzy EQ function of the transform as well. Okay, so nice, another bug fix there. So now what we need to do, we actually need to implement, where is it? Now we have the uh, gradient here. Um, and this actually has all been just some setup work for our next um, uh, uh, for our next pattern here. So now what we need to do is we need to implement our stencil trait for our gradient pattern. And this one actually will then allow us to provide the system with a color in pattern space. All the transformation is already done for us, but we need to provide the transform of the, um, the structure there because this needs to be implemented by the other um, trade functions here within the stencil to be done. So now what, what do we need here? We actually have all of our information ready. We need to return a new color and now we need to think about how we can somehow nicely uh, yeah, do some sort of tweening or some sort of fading between our color A and B so that it is a, a nice gradient we are creating there. I guess we would like to interpolate between the colors linearly. So do we have actually some sort of multiplication implementation on colors for ourselves? Because maybe we need those. Yeah, we can actually multiply colors with each other. That makes things a lot, a lot easier for us now. So, um, so we don't need to calculate this for each of the components. So let's think about this. Um, we actually want to to have a linear interpolation between those colors. And we want to um, take a look at the X coordinate only, I would guess, because 
um, as with the striped pattern before, where is it? Uh, exactly, we we just took a look at the uh, position X and we were interpolating along or we were making the stripes along the X axis because essentially this is only a yeah, one dimensional pattern kind of because in the Y direction it's just unlimitedly or, or infinitely high and in the Z direction we don't do anything. Our specific point of the pattern is only uh, based on the x coordinates. So let's get our x here just to make things a little bit more easy for us and extract it out of this position we are getting. And now um, we we need to think about this. We want a, a simple um, gradient between our starting color A and our end color B and we want those um, we want this transition within the length of one, I guess, so that, that it's easily scalable, but we want the gradient to be repeating because otherwise we wouldn't know what to do left of the uh, starting color and right of the end color. So I guess we just need to interpolate in this zero to one range. And um, for this, we can use the the fraction part of our x coordinate, I guess, so that once we are looping through through the different integers, we are just repeating. Yeah, I guess this would be would be an easy way. So uh, let fraction of x equal um, yeah, that would actually be x minus uh, x floor. Yeah, that should do it. So if we are flooring the value and we are, we are uh, removing this one, is this working for negative x values as well? Let me, let me quickly think about this. If this one is negative, then this one will be negative, but it will be kind of more negative. <laughs> so um, let's see, uh, I guess this will not this will not work for negative values, will it? So maybe we should um, we should use the absolute value of x here and here again, just to make sure that. Now let's um, calculate the distance between our colors. So distance of colors would be self dot color a minus, uh, no, wait a second, uh, color B minus, minus, come on, self dot color A. Um, yeah, and we have implemented, I've just seen that, we have implemented sub for color, which simply subtracts all of the different color values from each other. So this should give us a nice distance of the color. So a distance for all of the components. Yes. So now if we do some math there, let's let's see. So now we have the fraction and the distance of the color. So um, what we want to return is we want to always start at color A and we want to add um, we, we want to add a part of this distance, which actually is the, the, the missing part or the, the, the way to the, to the final color. And this one we want to base on this fraction. So it should be as easy as distance of colors multiplied by fraction of x. I would actually assume we have now implemented that. So um, maybe before implementing the tests for this, let's quickly add a way to uh, get this going with our YAML world loader so that we can actually use it and let's and have a, have a look at how this looks because that's always nicer than just having those theoretical tests there. So uh, let's see. Um, no, we it's it's more or less the same than our striped pattern. So I guess 
it would be quite easy to integrate this one here. So we are uh, checking the striped pattern here. So I guess we could do now here, uh, what was it, a gradient pattern and then we would like to visit the gradient pattern function which we don't have now uh, yet. So uh, we can implement this one. Let's see, um, it's more or less the same than the, than the striped one because we named the colors A and B as well. And yeah, I did this intentionally instead of naming them color start and color end or something like this, because then we can, or we, we have the same syntax as with our striped one. Uh, so this would be gradient pattern here then. And we are extracting the colors here. We are extracting the transforms and then we are not creating a striped pattern, but a gradient pattern, uh, gradient pattern and we of course need to import this one and we create it with the corresponding uh, colors and the transforms and now we are informed that we can create a pattern from that because we have not um, added this to our static dispatching. So let's quickly, um, quickly add this one. Actually if this is a pattern gradient then we need the gradient here and we need the gradient there and then we are calling this on uh, let's see gradient fuzzy equality other no gradient gradient so we now have here our gra but uh, um, a gradient thing but now we need a match for everything else and everything else um, should actually, yeah, I guess. Oh, we are doing fuzzy equality. So the default will simply be no, they are not equal because uh, if they are of a different type, then they are not equal. I was, okay, completely uh, not there with my thinking. Um, so yeah, we, we have now this one, we are dispatching there. We now need to, of course, dispatch the um, color add pattern in space function as well. So let's quickly do this. Yeah, this is kind of um, the, the, the not so nice thing with the static dispatch that we need to define all of this. Um, I know that there is a, a macro, a macro crate out there actually, which more or less does this things here for you and maybe I will integrate it sometime. I, I, I think I tried to play around with it one time and I didn't get it going easily. So I just gave up and did it manually. And I did it manually here, especially because I wanted to, to specifically understand what is happening there uh, when I implemented this first and not just use some sort of crate and to, not thinking about what would happen there. So now we should be able to know we did not implement, where are we? We did, we did not implement the from trade. Yes, we did not. So, um, so let's implement from for a pattern of type gradient, I guess. And then we have a gradient gradient here, gradient and gradient here. And now, wait, no, there, gradient as well. Everything is a gradient. There we go. So now this one should be able to create this. Yes, it is. And now actually this should already work. So, um, so let's see, uh, can I, I, I should be able to easily now have some sort of, uh, where are our worlds there uh, with stripe patterns. So let's maybe copy this one and call it with patterns just just in, in, in general. And now uh, the body here is striped. We have usually we have everything here striped, which we now could we could do, for example, um, yeah, that would actually be quite nice. Let's do a let's do a gradient now on the floor from white to black. Yeah, I, I don't really 
care about from where to where. So just, just let's take a look. So cargo run minus minus bin. I guess it was chapter nine. Do we have auto completion here? No, we do not. Because I'm not 100% sure how this one was called. Chapter nine render yaml. Render chapter zero nine render yaml. We want release mode and we want worlds. Um, which one was it now? Three spheres and the floor with patterns YAML. And let's just quickly render this. And so let's open up the main camera and let's take a look. And this uh, already looks looks kind of nice, but. I think around the the minus point we have now actually did what I what I did not want we we actually moved into the wrong direction from it but as you can see the um, the color is 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 faded there it's the gradient is created there so um, let's just take another color like for example this one and this one just to have things a little bit more bright and let's maybe comment out the second camera because we don't need it at the moment and it simply takes up running time during rendering so let's see again and let's open up our main camera there and as you can see now it's a little bit more aggressive on the eyes but yeah it kind of works but we have this this error there which we most likely likely produced uh, while I did this absolute there where was it there but if I do not let me let me quickly check maybe I'm, I'm thinking wrong there let me just check this if I don't do this let's let's uh, quickly render this again and then let's see um, so now if I'm opening up the camera, yes, so this is working, uh, but it, yeah, it doesn't look great because we don't have, uh, very much and very nice colors there. So, um, maybe we could do something like, yeah, no, let's not, 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 not think a lot, uh, about this now, but check if we can and we should be able to um, transform this so let's see where is our our floor yes our floor let's first of all yeah let's maybe not apply this gradient to the floor because it will just repeat endlessly and we could of course stretch this out to to fit the scene but maybe let's not let's not do this and let's uh let's make this oh was this really the only change no i commented on the camera uh let's make it striped again and let's for now apply this gradient to our maybe the maybe the left sphere i think the left sphere so this is now gradient and let's just do a gradient between green and yeah why not why not green and red and let's see how this one looks so yeah this one has multiple parts of this gradient as well do do we kind of oh yeah we are trans oh we are trans yeah we are transforming the pattern. This is, of course, not what we wanted. We actually, yeah, we, we moved it by 0 0.1. So it um, actually, it should be two times here because we have a sphere of, of um, uh, yeah, we have a sphere of radius one. So it will be zero to one or better said, it will be uh, here. This is the zero point. There will be a negative side and a positive side. And so um, what we could do actually is it should be enough to, uh, if we want this one to transform this transforms, let's have a, uh, let's type scale and let's, Let's scale this one to uh, no uh, to two two two. 
even though the other twos are not, not needed actually. Uh, we only need to scale x actually because we only take a look at x but I, I, I still like it to do it this way. And then we might do a type uh, translate, just translate and we want to translate to, um, let's see if we, is it enough to simply scale, it might be even enough to simply scale it by two, let's see. Or no, we might, no, we need to, to move it. No, we need to move it to the side. This will not be enough. Um, yeah, exactly. Now we are getting exactly the, the, the cut point in the middle, but we didn't, don't want that, even though this kind of looks cool as well. <laughs> but um, we would need to type translate, and we are just simply translating it one by x and this should actually be enough now to to make it render one full gradient let's see yeah and now we are getting a, a full gradient between red and green and actually this looks kind of nice so but maybe we could uh, do another thing here maybe we could no not two maybe we could rotate it so maybe we could do a type Rotation Z by degrees, like maybe, you, why not 90 degrees so that it goes from top to bottom. So this could look cool actually. So let's, what? Rotation Z, is it, is it rotate Z? Yeah, I'm never, I'm never sure. Yeah, it is rotate Z. So let's rotate it 90 degrees and let's uh, take a look. Yeah, that actually looks kind of nice. But I'm a little bit irritated by the fact that there seems to be more green than there is red in this thing now. Um, could we, let me quickly check if we rotate it by 270 degrees. Uh, no, no, we need to render first, of course. It should be, yeah, hmm, might be, might have something to do with the, I guess it is all right, because um, it might have to do something with the illumination. The light is, is coming from somewhere from here and therefore, of course, it is a lot darker down here than it is from up here and you can see yeah you can see this here as well but of course by uh, we're using white and black this is uh, not that heavily seen and there is some sort of shadowing going on as well so yeah it might be okay so yeah so we now can do this uh, let's I guess commit this because it works as it should be so let's first of all let's see what we changed here in the pattern and let's uh, quickly commit that so yeah we did all this this integration with the pattern um, the from implementation we actually implemented the pattern this is actually everything that we needed for our pattern and the, the rest was is only boilerplate code and yeah we need to, to maybe find a way to to do this better in the in the future but let's see uh, so let's commit this and implement gradient pattern um, this pattern takes two colors color a and color b and interpolates linearly in the value space 0 to 1 uh, between those colors um, based on the x coordinate it will repeat every uh, it will repeat for every uh, range of size 1 okay um, and now we have the the yaml world loader um, thing there we import the pattern okay yeah we do visiting and we have implemented this one and let's commit this as well 
implement or a read gradient pattern from YAML syntax. Mm. The syntax used here is the same as with the striped pattern. Uh, two colors are provided um, called color A and color B. Um, mm -hmm. Transformations may be supplied using the transform ski. Um, the name, uh, the, the type of the gradient pattern is gradient in lowercase. So yes. Yeah. So okay. So maybe not add get add get add worlds. Get CI. Um, create example or just create world definition containing striped patterns at, containing a gradient pattern besides striped ones. Nah. Uh, create a, a world YAML con having a gradient pattern besides striped ones. Yeah, okay. So let's go into the ray tracer challenge REPL here. And let's do uh, CD, no, CD Rust, not Assets Rust, yes. And let's do a cargo update, which, would sh which should fetch the newest version. Yes, it did. Very nice. And now we are doing an NPM run build and compiling all the WebAssembly stuff and things there. Yeah, so this one's finished. Nice. Let's do a quick start here and let's take a look if this works actually. Yeah, so uh, thank you for uh, joining me again and um, going on this journey with me uh, where I'm implementing this ray tracer in Rust and learning Rust at the same time. And uh, yeah, if you liked it, please subscribe, hit the bell so that you are informed when the next session comes out. Um, give me a thumbs up, which really helps with the YouTube algorithm and uh, the way it works so that other people see this as well. And um, yeah, you might contact me, a comment if you have any questions or some ideas or regards to, to some stuff I do there or tools I should maybe take a look at or crates I should take a look at, uh, like the one I asked for in the, in the, while, while doing. If you have something like this or know about something like this, please leave me a comment or reach out to me uh, on Twitter or on any other medium where I'm available. So uh, yeah, I hope you had fun watching this and uh, I will see you the next time. So bye.